Welcome back to another Skid Factory Quick Tech. While I was working on this old Chevy, it occurred to me that back in the day I used to have a lot of trouble trying to deal with thermo fan control. When we used to do a lot of engine swaps with uh, Japanese engines that um, had ECUs but never had thermo fan control in the ECU, we would often put them into another car that and, and you couldn't run whatever fan setup, setup they had. Sometimes they had a hydraulic fan, sometimes they had a separate fan controller, sometimes they just had a mechanical fan that could no longer be used. So back in the day, Miles and I uh, worked our way through it and came up with um, a pretty solid method of controlling the fan in the right way. Um, some people, they just switch the fan on when you turn the ignition on. That's how this car was, has been set up. Big problem with that, those fans are not built to run flat out all the time. You'll just wear them out and they will stop working. They also make a lot of noise. It also in, uh, sort of impedes the process of bringing the engine up to temperature. So yes, you should control the thermo fan. It should only be turned on when it's required. So on this particular engine, they're built to run at fairly high temps. It's all aluminium. Um, many other Toyota engines, a lot of Nissan engines, same thing. What we were doing with them is using this thermofan switch, which is originally fitted to a BMW um, around 80s, early 90s. It's actually, it's actually an auxiliary fan switch. So it's, it's, um, they had a, a series of switches that turned on different fans uh, at different times. So this one here is the right temperature range. It's 95 degrees on, 91 degrees off. That's in Celsius. If you don't know what Celsius is, use Google. So the reason why we use this switch rather than your aftermarket stuff that just has a single terminal is, is the dual terminal setup gives you a, more control over how you wire it. So it's just normally open when it gets to its 95 degrees, it closes. So that circuit then closes, you wire it up to a relay, which I'll show you later, and your fan comes on. If you only have one terminal, it's basically something that's going to go to ground. So the only way you can control that relay that turns the fan on is via a grounding circuit. Um, in the case of a late model car, when you've got air conditioning and that sort of thing, if you remove the engine fan, you need to use the thermatic fan to turn on when the air conditioning turns on. This allows you to do it because you can use a diode and feed in power from the air con clutch or whatever, like there's a few ways you can do it. But that's why we use these rather than your off-the-shelf stuff. Uh, also, a lot of the off-the-shelf stuff for V8 engines is much too low for a modern engine. They, they want to turn the fan on at 85 degrees or whatever. It's, it's just basically you're just going to turn it on. It's never going to turn off because that engine does not want to run at 85 degrees. It's not built for that. So you've got to pick the right temperature range. There's actually higher ranges than this. There's a, I think it's a 101, turns off at 95, and there is a lower one as well. So this one works pretty well with modern Japanese engines. Um, so that's why we always used it. So the biggest problem with these is it's got a metric thread on it. That's 14 by 1.5. Yes, that's a pain in the butt. If it was a taper, it'd be brilliant. You could pretty much bang that thing in anywhere with very little problem. Um, so that puts a little bit of a uh, difficulty into the equation, but um, you can actually buy that thread inside a 3 8 NPT, which is your common sort of tapered thread size that fits on most old V8s and that sort of thing. Um, you can buy that adapter as well, just a brass fitting. It's pretty simple stuff. So what we do with this is I've actually modified this cap here, which I'm not sure what it's there for in the first place. Uh, and put it in a lathe and punch through the middle of it and tapped it out to that thread. Um, this does, is a washer seal, so it does have to be a good straight uh, drill and tap. So we then just screw that in there. So basically this is designed to work on your top hose outlet where the high temperature is. Um, that looks like it's not, but it actually is because it's on the other side of the thermostat. This is the top hose, that's the bottom hose, but Toyota does things weird and puts hoses in weird places. Um, so. Basically, this needs to be where your temperature sender is for your um, dash or ECU or whatever. That's where the high temperature coolant is. That's what it needs to read. So when that high, te high temperature coolant comes up to 195 uh, degrees, this thing's going to switch on, cool it down, get
gets to 90, switches off. There's a five degree range, that's what you want. So that screws in there, screw it down. I've made a little connector here for it already. That's actually a brake light switch connector from a Nissan or Subaru. You can just put any old spade terminal, it's only a 6.3 millimeter or whatever they are, spade terminal, quarter inch. Um, connect it through. Then we wire it up through a relay. Come on, I'll show you how to wire it up. All right, let's get into this wiring side of things. We've got a bit of background noise here because someone's harvesting a forest out the back. Um, so we apologize for that. You'll just have to ignore it. Here's my whiteboard with my wiring diagram on it. First of all, this is a relay. If you don't know what a relay is or does, find out. Jump onto the thing that you're watching right now and type in how does a relay work and everything will come up before your eyes. What a time to be alive, Rodrigos. Oh, I love it, mate. So, here's our fans. You can have one, two, three, eight, however you like. Just make sure your relay can handle the load. Here's our battery. Pin number 30 on the relay. This, these pin numbers are uh, Bosch numbers from back in the way back in the day, but they're pretty generic. So pin number 30 is battery. It also goes to your ignition switch. Car's full of ignition switches. Don't just connect it to the back of your ignition switch. There should be a million of them everywhere. It's just power when you turn the ignition on. All right, so that goes through into our fan switch. So it's got two, two terminals, goes through and it comes back out. If the, if the switch turns on at 95, we get power on this side as well, down to 85, through the coil inside the relay to 86 to ground. That pulls down the relay and we get power at 87. So there's two 87s on a lot of relays. Through a fuse into your fan. Fans work, done deal. So the reason why we use a dual terminal switch rather than a single that just goes to ground is because we can then utilize it to control the fans off the AC circuit. So a lot of these cars, they wouldn't have had a fan for the AC because they had a big engine fan or whatever, some many, many reasons. So what we can do is when this AC clutch is turned on, 12 volts goes through to it. We push it through here on this side of the switch and it goes through and switches the fans on. This here is a diode and that diode is basically a one-way valve for electricity that stops the AC clutch turning on when you turn the fans on via the via engine temperature. That's what a diode looks like when it's in a Japanese car a lot of the time. There's hundreds of them in Subarus and Nissans and that sort of thing in the 80s and 90s. Very easy to get if you just go down to a braking yard and pick through the loom. They're just usually taped on the outside. Um, vehicle grade stuff not a thing that's meant to be soldered into a circuit board it's better to use this sort of thing than to than to go to whatever radio shack and get one all right so that pretty much covers the operation of it and why we use this sort of switch and not a single um what next woody i think we're pretty much done here mate cool how about a beer thanks man that's a lemon squash Oh, that one, sorry. Oh, mine's a beer. Cheers, dude. Thanks for watching. Does that like get louder and it must be going one side of the log to the other? It's not birds, it's chainsaws.